everybody. I'm Nona Baker, co-chair of MPN Voice, and a very warm welcome to my monthly vlogcast. Uh, today, I'm really excited to have Jill Thomas with me. And Jill is an ET patient originally, uh, who then became an MF patient and has a really good story to tell, and especially some extremely good tips on how to manage symptoms. Jill, I'd be really grateful if you, and thank you for coming, I'd be really grateful if you could tell us your story. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Nona. Um, lovely to be here and lovely to share my story with, with all of you. Um, back in 2004, when I was just 40, um, I was diagnosed with having essential thrombocytemia or ET for short. Um, it came totally out of the blue following actually going five months with IBS symptoms to the GP. I had had headaches and some what I now know as visual disturbances, but didn't know that at the time. Uh, and eventually a, a complete blood test um, showed that there was a problem with my platelets. There were too many of them. And I had a phone call um, from the surgery saying I probably had leukemia and um, I needed to go and see a specialist and have a bone marrow transplant to get a full diagnosis. So that threw my world into complete shock, um, completely out of the blue. I duly went and um, did all those uh, things and it was confirmed that I had um, ET. Now at that stage, it, it, the only information was from cancer research on hydroxycarbamide, the, one of the drugs used, um, and, and very little else in, in terms of information. Uh, we put myself on watch and wait initially and, and aspirin, um, and that lasted for about three years. Um, I totally resisted going on any treatment with the great fear of the word chemotherapy. Um, but in 2007, I did have to go um, on to hydroxycarbamide because my platelets had got to 1.6 million and I was having severe symptoms. So um, I started on that um, and it took quite a long time for me to get into, into I would call balance um, with, with the drug reducing the symptoms and the disease symptoms reducing with the effect of the drug. Um, so uh, that took quite a lot of time and I, and I felt like I had no energy. I literally went from being the most active gym bunny, sailor, windsurfer, runner, everything to doing very little because I couldn't even hardly walk up my stairs at the end of a, a busy work day. Um, so I really struggled. I, I was also caring for an elderly parent and um, was really, really worried about not being able to do that. Um, so uh, eventually things got a little bit better. And, and certainly when I was diagnosed, I didn't deal with it very well. I totally put it in a box. I, I tried to compartmentalize it just um, so that it wouldn't impact anything else and that everything else might continue on as normal. And I had just this big box of uh, ready to explode. So um, I did eventually go and see uh, a, uh, a counselor who helped me realize that that really wasn't a very good strategy and it wasn't helping me. And gradually I started sharing my story with um, some friends and, and other people um, as I became, I suppose, a bit more um, accustomed to, to living life with, with ET. Um, and I think one of the pieces of advice that was given to me then was to try and think of the treatment as a positive thing that is doing good in your body um, and that that really helped me transform I suppose my my vision of what was happening and this uh, these drugs I was taking and when I started to sort of feel more in balance that really really helped me um, kind of move forward I felt a little bit less fatigued um, and I learned quite a lot about how I needed to move forward and live my life the, the biggest thing uh, I learned um, having a very busy job was to pace myself. Um, so that meant trying not to do too much all of the time, allowing time for rest, allowing time for exercise, allowing time um, just if you were feeling like you'd run into a little bit of a brick wall. Um, 
so I've, I've learned through that 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 has been a great help um, and that has continued through uh, to you know current day when more recently I was diagnosed with myelofibrosis uh, post essential thrombocytemia myelofibrosis and whilst in fact my symptoms haven't changed um, the whole experience of the diagnosis was completely different um, I was told by the consultant that it was possible that I was progressing. Um, so I knew what to expect. I went for a bone marrow and I had a few weeks waiting for the results. Then when uh, the results came through and I had my appointment with the consultant, I had been able to prepare, ask lots of questions um, and really be able to digest the implications of it for myself. Happily, um, as I say, my symptoms haven't changed. I'm on the same treatment currently. And of course, I'm very encouraged that today we have all these wonderful new treatments being, um, being uh, available to us, along with uh, information about what causes our conditions, the gene mutations. Um, and all of that is very encouraging uh, compared to when I first was, was diagnosed. You've had a long journey, haven't you? And it sounds as if you've um, been able to approach it in a very positive way. Um, I'm sure that must have helped along the way. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. No, no. I think I think I mean, initially I wasn't positive, um, but I learned that I needed to change my attitude. And I, and I think there's there's something in if you can't change a situation or in our case, a, a condition, um, you need to change your attitude to it. And I felt that once I changed my attitude to it and the treatment, um, that positivity began to come through in how I even felt getting up in the morning and doing my daily activities, whatever, whatever they are. So you're absolutely right. Um, that's important. I know that you had um, a fairly full on job that you've talked about. How did you cope with fatigue? Because... Um, you know, I know that that's one of the symptoms you've talked to me about as being the most, well, you've said about being really, really tired. Um, and I wonder if you've got any tips for people who are having to work alongside having to live with ET or, or with an MPN. What mm. top tips can you give them? Well, I think it's very important to have a good routine um, and trying to get a sufficient amount of sleep is is important um and getting that routine where you have a little bit of time out time away from devices emails all of those things so that you are relaxed enough to be able to go to sleep when you do go to bed um and not be tossing and turning it's amazing the difference that made in a day to me if i had a bad night's sleep the next day I and the next few days I would struggle so um making sure that you switched off from everything else for at least an hour before um going to bed was the first thing pacing myself and that means as I say during the day trying sometimes it's very hard not having back-to-back -back meetings etc or having a little break at lunchtime and not eating lunch at your desk but going for a 10-minute walk yeah. um just pacing across the day but pacing across the week um, none of us want to lose our social life and it's very difficult sometimes I think you said before um, we all can have too much in our diaries mm -hmm. and we have to sometimes say well I need to prioritize that over this and not be out three or four nights of the week when maybe Th two or three might do um so i certainly um probably uh didn't go out maybe on a friday night or didn't see friends and relaxed um and then i also made sure i had a a, a good weekend routine with plenty of rest so pacing was a, a, the first thing really sleep um exercise um of whatever people are able to do and and now i'm back up to you know walking quite significant distances um, but um, uh, I would I'd say it, it is important to have balance in your life um, and hydrate and eat well. That, that is so important, the hydration, isn't it? You know, I, and I agree with absolutely everything that you have said and it's some really good tips. But but I also want to acknowledge for some people with a diagnosis of ET, they have many more things to struggle with 
than mm. you and I have had. And I often sit and think, you know, when I hear hear some people talk about, you know, how difficult the diagnosis mm. has been, um, that it's 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 often I feel really lucky that I've mm. had a relatively easy journey. But I think your tips about pacing are really important. Doesn't matter, you know, whether you're full of um symptoms, um, but or, or not so many symptoms. I think in life, don't you, pacing is really important. Because I, don't I, know, I think sorry. I don't, I don't know about you, Jill, but if I get really tired, I think my husband says I can get a bit ratty. <laughs> so I think it's important for a happy household not to get overtired and get grumpy and ratty. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and I also think that the other thing that if you can reduce some stressful situations, and there are some things that we can't reduce because stress happens in normal daily life, but but if there's some things you can reduce or you can at least come down from the stresses of the day in order to have that almost pace in, in, in changing your pace of your day, then that's very, very helpful as well um, to being able to then get a good night's sleep, which is important for us to, to recover. Mm. This has been incredibly, incredibly helpful. What would you say to any newly diagnosed patient would be the most important thing to think about when they are told that they have an MPN? Well, there's so many things to think about. Um, I think number one, I would say is trust in your medical team um, and, and use them well. They are there and you need to work with them. It's a team effort and there's no I in team. So um, for, for me, uh, it's prepare for your appointments, ask them questions. Don't be afraid to, um, to talk to them about uh, issues that you have. There's a very useful tool that um, exists. There's the symptom monitor, the MPN 10, and that's very useful for being able to communicate with your team about the issues of, that you have experienced, whether they be fatigue or, or other ones. And it helps you remember what they were like over the last six weeks and not just the last week when you remember that best, of course, when you go to an appointment. Um, and I think that helps you communicate a lot about your fatigue and any other symptoms that you have to your medical um, team. And they can help you with that. And I think that's really helpful and useful. I think that's so important, isn't it? Because quite often, you know, you go to hospital and you're more concerned about the, the mm. nervousness, which is quite normal, mm -hmm. about walking into a hospital. So you forget things that you 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 know mm. that are important to you. So actually, you're absolutely right. Write things down, too, that you want mm. to ask is, is, I think, then you get the best out of your out of your appointment. Jill, this has been fantastic. And I'm sure I, I'm absolutely certain it will be enormously helpful to a lot of people going through a diagnosis and, and early stages of treatment and also people who have have had it for a long time. And, mm. and you know, both you and I have had have an MPN or a, a blood disorder, as it was originally, for a very long time. Um, I'd just like to ask you if there's anything else that you feel, Jill, would be really useful for a newly diagnosed or, or a patient that's been around for as long as you and I have? Well, I, I think the the MPN symptom monitor is incredibly useful. Um, and, and I think that enables people to communicate with their medical teams how they're feeling, not just now, but in the seven, eight weeks, two months or three months between appointments, rather than just what their memory is. And, and to make sure that they use, use that information to communicate with their team. And, and what I think is really exciting is the work now on the, the wearables and the new MPN voice app, which um, I'm very excited to see coming out later on, uh, which will help us communicate even better with our teams. So all they great are, stuff. They are amazing. I have my wearable here, to, been, been testing it. Um, and it is an amazing bit of, of advance in how we communicate. Jill, this is, I can't thank you enough. It's been an absolute joy to have this conversation with you. Um, and, you know, I'm sure we will meet again as time goes on and our journeys with MPNs. Thank, thank you, Nona. Thank you.